mass of the electron and the neutrino will still be equal to W mass. The trouble is you have no way of measuring the invariant mass of the electron neutrino system because you don't know what the energy momentum of the neutrino is. Now there is uh, one of course clarifying comment here that is instead of considering this decay you could consider the decay of W decaying into flux and well we do not exactly measure the quark momentum but something can be measured from which you can construct a invariant mass and that will give you the W mass. So why do not you do that? Why do you insist on doing this? The answer is probably I told you in the Higgs context that the strong cross sections are always, always very, very large. So QQ bar will be produced copiously in the hadron collider. Of course, since the QQ bars from W will give you a peak, probably you can still reconstruct the mass, but this will involve large. Yeah. On the other hand, electrons do not have that large, large background and therefore the leptonic channel is preferred. W decaying into hadronic channel will always have a big, big background because quark, antiquarks will be produced in millions, maybe even in billions, I don't know, in a machine like LLC. Whereas this electronic cross section is typically small and there will be few. So we insist on the electronic channel. And so for this. Yes, energy momentum measurement of the jet is not good simply because of the fact that because of their interaction, the energy momentum of the not quark exactly, but the jets coming from the quarks, they are smeared and therefore we will have a problem. Yeah. We do not know exactly the energy momentum. But then you can rescale the jet energy, this and that, you can do various tricks and improve it. <coughs> but it is not without large error that you can measure W mass. So therefore, although this has the neutrino nuisance, we prefer this channel and see if we can somehow, and then you will see that it is algebra. Now you will see that suppose I was given this problem when I was doing my relativistic kinematics and I was given let us say 48 hours. I would derive this. It is so simple. But again, somebody does it for the first time and that is... Uh, <coughs> but I will now tell you a problem towards the end of this that which can still get you somewhere by doing simple kinematics. A problem which has not been solved to everybody's satisfaction. So let me go to the construction. This is actually very simple. There is nothing other than... So we say that... We construct not the invariant mass, but something called a transverse mass. This is a matter of definition, so do not worry. Invariant mass of 
my electron neutrino system will be something like this. Measurable. Neutrino momentum is there. 
transverse momentum of the electron because W is produced with no transverse momentum. Remember two partons are colliding. They have different longitudinal momentums but no transverse momentum. So the W will be produced with a longitudinal momentum but no transverse momentum. Therefore, this is nothing but so this is magnitude and this term in principle is zero. So the transverse mass is measurable. The invariant mass you need not measure because it is mw square. Therefore you can immediately say that this difference is greater than zero. And therefore you say that the transverse mass now I will leave the this, this transverse mass of electron and neutrino it can be anything but no matter what it should be less than n w square alright m w square minus the transverse mass is a or no I think I, I, I made a mistake here I made a mistake here I should not write it this way so then you can write that m w square minus m square sorry minus m square transverse mass should be less than or equal to this quantity and this quantity on the right hand side is this just follows from the by inspection from this terms are here right hand side is positive that is, right hand side is, sorry, not positive, greater than or equal to. So, therefore, the difference is, the difference is an algebraic expression which is positive or zero. Therefore, m e square t can be anything but it can never exceed zero. That is the whole idea. No, can I? Yes. I, I couldn't get m t square equal to. What's the first uh, first element? Or p d u t plus b. Right. No, this this. The first expression is. Not here. Actually. First expression was m square e mu the invariant mass which is equal to m w square equal to this horrible expression. No, I'm talking about this expression. Which the expression? This one. Just right. This the definition of empty, uh, empty is first. Oh, it's a definition. Uh, so, what is the P nu T first? first term? P nu T is the magnitude of the transverse momentum of the neutrino. In this case, P nu T is the. So, empty squared is defined as PT squared plus M squared, right? PT squared plus M squared. But, for a single particle, it is PT squared plus M squared. But if the mass is negligible, then empty is simply the magnitude of now can I have that three A? Hi.
the construction. Just put the updated function. Who? Hmm? Yes, updated. Is it there? What is the lesson? The average is your site. This no, website. It's a fixed part. Yes, we put this one. Okay. Right. So go to the website of Tao Han. Just search Google Tao Han. And you will read there. And that has a. But the dynamic approximation is yes. described here already. Okay. 